is Star Citizen an MMORPG? Besides the fact that we have to define what that even means in this video, the game itself is far from complete. It can be pretty buggy at times, sometimes it can feel quite lonely, and it still runs the risk of a progress wipe due to it still being an ever-changing game in alpha. But the experiences that it can offer do sometimes feel like you're living in a thriving online world. And some of the new systems coming to a close and being tested at the time of this video might make a big difference. So in this video, I'm going to look at what makes an MMORPG, whether Star Citizen can or will ever live up to that criteria, and when that might happen if it already hasn't. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. While there are many reasons for someone to call a game an MMORPG, today we're going to focus on the following criteria. Interactivity amongst the player, their surroundings and other players, persistence lending to a world that feels like it has a history, and that massive population feel. Not just in terms of number, but density. And we'll keep in mind an extra character customization category to account for that RPG part of the name. While the interaction menu in Star Citizen is quite terrible at the moment, the game does a great job of making objects in the world feel real. Well, some objects. The interactions that can be had when the animations work out can feel very tactile from this first person experience. But one major problem the game in Alpha suffers from right now is that not everything is using their respective up-to-date systems or reacting in ways that you would expect. For instance, cargo retrieved for a mission may be picked up, but cargo ordered at a kiosk can't be interacted with. At least, not until the 3.18 update. As another example, you have full access to add, remove, or manipulate items on you or other bodies, but sometimes those items don't even respond to you. So you don't know if it's not meant to respond to you, or if it's just a glitch. Star Citizen is riddled with glitches. Both the interaction and inventory systems suffer from this unreliability. But neither of these things are by design or destined to stick around. All games will have a certain amount of interactivity, and considering the stage Star Citizen is at, it seems to be on a good path. And that is because it's about more than just the first person experience. Spaceships are the most important part of the game, and players have a multitude of ways to interact with ships and use ships to interact with others. Landing in your friend's ship and coming aboard, storing some weapons on the wall mounts for your party to use later, taking a turret position on the ship alongside your friends to fight some space battles. Almost everything in the game can be experienced together, and there's a decent amount of interactivity surrounding the ships you use that enhance the experience. But it's far from complete. Things like engineering and keeping ships running by actually working on the parts is several updates away. Using your hands to move around in zero-g will still be a little while away as well. Cutting through materials systemically, and even something as simple as trading items with a friend are still nowhere to be seen. We know they are all coming, but as with many things with a game still in heavy development, and Star Citizen in particular, the question is when. As far as interactivity with your world and the people in it around you, Star Citizen does a decent job for now. But it does seem on the path to be something impressive in the future. Persistence in Star Citizen has been an ever-present development. Originally, nothing would last longer than an update. Every single change to the game would wipe all content. Then in the beginning of 2020, long-term persistence began, allowing the game items, states, and ledgers to run unbothered until November of the next year. With incremental wipes of these different parts of the game based on bugs, exploits, and other problems with the game, there's definitely an uncertainty while playing whether the things you're earning really matter. And this will be a lasting issue until the game finally goes live. But as we've moved further along in development, the dev team has been developing new ways to allow items even to persist after these wipes, among other things. 
But putting that whole complication aside, the feeling of making lasting differences or seeing things persist is a mixed bag already. At the time of this writing, persistent entity streaming is being tested for implementation in the next update, Alpha 318. While this technology is a crucial step that allows all objects, ships, damage states, cargo, and other things to persist constantly in their given shard, it won't be launching complete. While this persistence is expected to come with 318 and make a big change to the way things exist in the world, there are constantly dozens, if not hundreds, of these shards running, crashing, and spooling back up. The likelihood that you get placed into the same one after leaving is pretty low, unless you have a friend there. That's because the matchmaking service that makes sure you are always landing in the same shard is part of that incomplete reality of the 3.8 update. There will be no matchmaking service that makes sure you go into the correct shard based on the people you play with, where most of your things are, or any other context. You'll just get placed in whatever server there is. This, as you can imagine, takes a lot of steam out of that feature coming with 3.18, but it's not the whole story. Overall, there is an underlying amount of persistence in Star Citizen already. The things that are stored in your ships, at your space station hubs, or in your city of choice will always be there when you come back. Collecting, hoarding, looting, and building an arsenal of ships, weapons, armor, ammo, or I guess plants is completely possible and something people are doing every day. You'll find that your earnings from missions, your reputation with important contacts, and even the location you leave your ship when you log off by going to sleep will all stay the same. And as of 318, every shard you jump into will have its own history. History of the battles that other ships piloted by players or AI fought. Of the cargo somebody lost on a moon. Of the location of a weapons stash, ship storing locations, and unofficial racetracks. All of that will still be there and it will bring gameplay like piracy, salvage, and looting. But the illusion is not in place. You will run into many, many instances in which you see where the lines are still drawn and find your experience dampened due to incomplete implementations of these features. So as far as persistence goes, it's there and it works, but like all parts of the game, it is an unfinished alpha implementation and it will leave you wanting more until the development catches up. If you want to know more about persistence in the server meshing that will make it much more powerful, I have a couple videos on the topic I'll leave linked down below. To be honest, this is the easiest criteria to answer, but I think it's also the hardest to satisfy. Everybody can agree on a game being pretty reactive and interactive, and persistence is easily measurable. But I think the idea of a game being massive kind of depends on the person. For starters, I don't think Star Citizen is massive at all. There's a ton of ground space and there's also a ton of space space, which makes it massive. But that also makes it feel small because you don't really see people too often. Now, I'll admit the recent shard boost up to around 130 players per shard has increased the amount of player interactivity. It's still not enough to make the game qualify as a massive game, though, in my opinion. Because it's not just about the number of players or the size of the game, it's a combination of both. The density of the players in the game around you matters, especially in one where an entire city covers a planet that you can fly around. There should be spaceships and fellow citizens everywhere, and there just aren't. And the fact that the servers right now can't manage AI in any state beyond basic functionality, mostly, doesn't help. So while you can find an MMO experience in this game, going to parties like the one my friend Morphologist held with 100 players on a single ship, or taking part in the Daymar Rally with dozens of players forming teams to race across a desert moon, or taking part in any number of huge battles in space or down on the ground or entering atmosphere or deep in the cave, the game itself is still not really that massive. And that's what server meshing hopes to accomplish. So as long as development has been, there does seem to be a concerted push towards actually making this game what many would consider an MMORPG. That's not to say I know what makes a game in that genre, I don't claim to be an authority in the genre, I've actually rarely been involved. But I think despite all the different subgenres that sit below this umbrella term, 
This criteria does fit the type of game Star Citizen is aiming to be. And we can see persistent entity streaming making its debut in the coming months, beginning the end of our persistence problem, server meshing hopefully in the following years to begin expanding the massive feeling of the game, and then big milestone gameplay elements that are beginning to produce results. Features like the new interactivity system we've seen demoed at CitizenCon, or the resource management network that has been covered for years now, demoed running in-game at CitizenCon and already beginning to affect the atmosphere, power, and controls of the ships. There's also the cargo refactor, beginning this month with physicalizing all cargo, and even somewhere, someday, maybe, the quantum economy simulation, pushing player action to the macro level and allowing for a proper economy to function across all star systems. But until then, this game is still an alpha of that MMORPG. And if you're looking for that experience, there's a good chance Star Citizen won't actually provide it yet. It can be very buggy, glitchy, and overall frustrating. And more often than not, the players that are currently playing are looking for a sandbox environment rather than a story or quest driven one. If you do find you want to try the game out though, there are plenty of free play weeks throughout the year. You can make an account using the link below with my referral code and hop into the game in November when the next is likely to occur. Or you can come join me for some gameplay on my streams also linked down below. But I would definitely suggest taking a look at the game before jumping in for the $45 starting price. Oh, and I also mentioned a little extra metric, the RPG element of the game. There's actually quite a bit you can do to roleplay in this game. From the different character customization options, weapon and armor choices, ship options, factions you can work with, and sides of the law you can play for. You can get deep into it quite a bit for where the game is. And if that's not enough, there are some amazing machinima projects and organizations that take it a step further. But recently, a new announcement was made. That player character would actually gain some level of small natural buff based on the activities they took part in, such as running, carrying boxes, or keeping a steady aim. This would be a similar system to GTA San Andreas with their physical attributes, but much less apparent. I won't comment here about whether I do or don't like the way this sounds up front. We got almost no additional info about the ramifications this may have in the week following, so I'm still waiting to hear more on that. But it sounds like the RPG elements will go one step further. All in all, going by the definitions that were set out in this video for an MMORPG, I don't think Star Citizen qualifies yet. But it does seem to finally be getting there to some extent. Some existence of these game elements, systems, and technologies actually working is a good sign that you may get a very different answer to that question in the next couple of years. Because it's always the next couple of years. If for those next couple of years you'd like to see regular weekly, monthly, or annual updates on how the game is coming along, consider subscribing below for more Star Citizen news. And if you'd like to help support these videos and get monthly exclusive videos that are a bit more in-depth than my normal ones, Patreon and YouTube members get that and more. All support is appreciated. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.